Psychology One with Edwin G. Boring, the Edgar Pierce Professor of Psychology and Lowell Television Lecturer, Harvard University. The subject of this program, hypnosis. Professor Boring. Well, here we are. Last time it was idea motor action. We ended up with hypnosis, and I told you that we would have Dr. Martin Orne of the Boston Psychopathic Hospital, who is doing research on hypnosis here, to show you what hypnosis is like, to tell you something about it, and here he is. Come in, Dr. Orne. This is Dr. Martin Orne. He needs all the time he can have, so I turn it over to him. Go, go to it. Thank you very much, Professor Boyle. Well, hypnotism, or hypnosis as it is called, unfortunately is still viewed as something of a mystery by most people, something almost akin to magic. I'd like to say a few words about it, and then we'll try to demonstrate some of this phenomena to you. Now, first of all, let's take the hypnotic trance. What is it? What does it look like? Well, as you'll see, it may appear to be that the subject seems passive. He will seem also sometimes to be asleep, but he need not look asleep. He may look completely awake. Then again, you'll find that in every trance, and this is actually the thing that happens in every trance, that the subject is motivated to follow the suggestions of the hypnotist. In a deep trance, he will actually be able to see, hear, touch, feel things that are not actually there. This we call hallucination. We may be able to induce hallucinations in the subject. By the same token, we may enable him not to see, not to hear things, which in fact are actually there. Again, pain may be suppressed. And this makes possible, uh, we can do dental operations. We may even do major surgical procedures under hypnosis without any other anesthesia. On awakening, the subject may have, if it is suggested to him, a complete lack of memory for the events which have occurred during the trance. This is called amnesia. And yet, he may carry out suggestions which we gave him during the trance without any awareness. This is called a post-hypnotic suggestion. All this sounds very impressive. Yet let's look at it just a little bit further. How, how unique, how impressive is this really? It sounds, well, like quite something when we say pain may be suppressed. Yet there are other times when things like this happen. You've all sometime other been sick, been in pain, and finally, your physician arrives. He walks into the room, and the pain seems to evaporate. Your doctor hasn't given you a pill, he hasn't given you an injection, yet you feel better. Why? Well, you know from past experience that the doctor has made you feel better. You expect him to help you, and so, in fact, you feel better. A personal relation exists between you and the physician, which makes it possible for you to not feel the pain. This is the essence of hypnosis. It is an interpersonal relationship, and the ability to enter this type of relationship is inherent in almost all normal people. Then, actually, the trance, the hypnotic trance, is not foisted upon a poor, dumb, or weak subject. No. In fact, it is the result of the cooperative effort between the subject and the hypnotist to achieve something which they both want. If both the subject and the hypnotist don't want this, no trance will take place. Now, this may be uh, to help the subject to treat him, to remove some undesirable habit, or to do an experiment, which both the subject and the hypnotist are interested in. Now, you may ask, what of the stage hypnotist who seems to make a fool out of people? Uh, how does that fit in? Well, here again, the needs of the subject are met. Because, after all, most people haven't been a stage celebrity before. Most people like to show off. They like to be the center of attention. Here they get an opportunity to do this. And if the subject does not have this desire to be the center of attention, he will not, during a stage performance, enter a trance. However, the same subject who may not enter a trance during a stage performance may very readily enter a deep trance in order to avoid the pain of a dental 
extraction, for example, or any other purpose which he really wants. Now, uh, this is really the important thing to remember, that hypnosis is a cooperative effort, and only through cooperation will actually the subject go into attack. Now, one more thing about this. Hypnosis doesn't make it possible to do things for the subject which are really outside of his capacity. So, actually, the subject isn't put to sleep. He's helped to go to sleep. He actively wants to go to sleep, and all the hypnotist does is he guides him and he shows him how. The one thing that's important is the relationship of trust and confidence exists between the subject and the hypnotist. Now, just let me add one word of caution at this point. It's very easy to induce a trance. Many, many people know how to induce a trance. It, it's really very simple. And yet, this doesn't mean that somebody, because he knows how to induce a trance, can treat someone. It is very dangerous for anyone who is not a qualified psychologist or a licensed physician to try to treat people. Even to remove a habit such as smoking, to tell somebody you won't smoke, this also is dangerous without a very careful study of the subject, of the patient in this case. And the ability to induce a trance is no more really a license to treat than is the ability to cut meat a license to do surgery. So please, don't permit yourself or your family to be treated either by quacks or by well-meaning amateurs, or by ambitious stage hypnotists. Now, I'd like to try to demonstrate some of this pheno these phenomena to you. We have with us tonight three volunteers who have been subjects in prior studies of mine and who therefore know how to enter a trance readily. Let me introduce them to you. Ms. Salatini, Mr. Friedberg, Ms. Simon. They were kind enough to volunteer and help us tonight, and I'd like to ask them, first of all, I'd like to point out that they know how to enter trance because they've done so previously. So it will be quite simple for them, and I would like you to just again make yourself quite comfortable and to just look at your hands, which you'll relax on your lap, and look at your right hand in particular. Just focus your mind on your right hand, and as you watch it, as you think about it, you'll gradually find it'll grow light. And soon it'll begin to lift itself upward into the air, as if by itself. And as it gradually rises upward, you're going to become aware that your eyes will grow heavy. So heavy, in fact, that they'll close as your hand touches your forehead, and you'll find yourself going to sleep into a deep, dark, and quiet. Now as your hand is touching your forehead, you're falling into a deeper and deeper sleep. That deeper and deeper And with every breath, you find yourself falling into a deeper and deeper sleep. Now, as I talk to you, you'll find that your left hand also will gradually grow light and will gradually begin to pick itself up by itself and move upward into the air so that soon your left hand will be covering your left ear. As it moves upward, your right hand is covering your right ear. It's moving gradually toward your right ear until both of your hands will soon be covering your ears tightly. Both of your hands are moving upward and upward, pressing tighter and tighter to your ears, so tightly now that soon you're going to be unaware of any sound other than my voice. As both of your hands press tightly over your ears, you'll find that you'll be unable to hear anything but my voice. That's right, pressing tighter and tighter, and now as I say three, you will hear only my voice. One, two, and three, can you hear anything but my voice? Ask me. Yeah. That's right. Can you hear anything but my voice? And no. That's right. Nothing else at all. Everything else is much too far away. Can you hear anything but my voice? Answer me. Yeah. That's right. You're sleeping much too deeply to hear anything else. That's fine. Now, you're going to remain asleep. You're going to remain deeply asleep. And you will react only if I touch you when I talk to you. Otherwise, I will be talking to someone else. Now, as I talk to you, you're sleeping deeper. And gradually, your hands will drop down and you'll remain in a deep sleep. You'll remain in a deep, dark, and quiet sleep. As your hands will drop down, you'll continue to hear only my voice, nothing else at all. Your hands are dropping down, 
down, down. Now you'll remain deeply asleep in a dark sleep. Now listen very carefully. I'd like you and you alone to think for a moment, to imagine vividly. Just imagine yourself in a movie now, watching a very funny movie. And it'll strike you very funny. In fact, you'll begin to laugh at it. And you'll keep enjoying it because you see the movie. It's a very funny movie. You'll remain asleep as I talk to you. But you'll keep enjoying that movie because it is a very, very funny movie. You'll keep enjoying it. That's right. That's right. You'll remain asleep now. I'll be back. You'll sleep deeper and deeper. All right, now you're sleeping deeper and deeper, and you still hear only my voice. Can you hear anything else, Anthony? <laughs> no. That's right. Now, as I talk to you, your right hand is gradually moving upward in front of you, upward, and gradually becoming straight, straighter, and straighter, and straighter. So straight that when I say three, no one, not even you, will be able to bend that arm. Straighter, and straighter, and straighter. That's right. So straight that when I say three, you'll be unable to bend it. One, two, three, you cannot bend it. Try and bend it. All right. Try harder. Try to bend it with the other hand. <laughs> Try harder. All right. Stop trying. You cannot. Now listen very carefully. Soon you'll be opening your eyes and you'll remain asleep. Open your eyes and you'll still hear only my voice. One, two, three, open them. That's right. Can you hear anything but my voice? Yeah. That's right. Now look at your hand, which will straighten out again. Look at your right hand and watch it straighten out again. You'll remain asleep. You won't look asleep, but you'll be asleep. Because you'll find that you'll be unable to bend the elbow. Try and bend it. You can't. Try harder. That's right. All right, it'll stay just as it is. But you'll keep your eyes open and you'll remain deeply asleep. Tony, are you asleep now? Mm. Uh -huh. Try and bend the elbow. All right, that's fine. Now look, I'd like to, you to imagine something for me. Look over here at this chair. You know Mr. Friedberg, don't you? Yes. Just imagine him sitting here. Just think of what he might look like if he sat in this chair. <laughs> the kind of a smile on his face. The cool cut he's got. The pink shirt. The flat, the gray flat. Look at him. Would you mind introducing me, please? Yes. Dr. Owen, uh, this is Bob Friedberg. Bob, this is Dr. Owen. How do you do? You, you know, Bob here doesn't believe that you're in a trance. Why? He just doesn't believe. He's very skeptical. <laughs> Would you convince him that you are? I'll try. Go ahead. It's all right for you to talk to him. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Why don't you believe I'm not in a trance? All right. You sleep on the pizza. No, it isn't a cell. Pizza. <laughs> Deep, and now you hear only my voice, nothing but else. But why would I lie to you? Nothing else at all. Can you hear anything but my voice, Anthony? That's right. Now listen very That's carefully. Good. As I talk to you now, I want you to imagine a little girl. But it isn't just a, a little girl. Just a little girl. A little six-year-old girl. Think about her. You soon see her. Can you see her? That's right. What's her name? Lila, that's right. In fact, it's you, isn't it? <laughs> that's right. And you're just six years old, aren't you? How old are you? That's right. You'll open your eyes, but you'll remain deeply asleep. You're just six years old, aren't you? I'm not Open your eyes. That's right. How old are you, Lila? Six. Tell me, what did you do today? I can't hear you. Can you talk louder? I was out playing. Uh huh. What day is today? Saturday, huh? Tell me, would you mind doing something for me? <laughs> Look, I tell you, would you come to this blackboard with me? Okay. What did you play today? Uh huh. With your bicycle and with your dog. Or would you mind writing your name for me? Can you write? Can you print? All right. Would you print your name? Go ahead. Here's the chalk right there. Very good, an individual. <laughs> but I tell you, we're in the press. <laughs> Would you mind drawing me the picture of the man over here? Okay. Here. And then a tree over here. I don't think you're going to write to say that. 
Have you convinced him? No, he's very bigoted. He is? Yes. Uh huh. He makes you pretty angry? Yes, he does. Well, that's all right. You'll remain deep this week. Tell me, uh, who's this gentleman over on your right? Bob Seaver. Who is this? Bob Seaver. Are they, what do you, how come? Reflection. Reflection? Yeah. What kind of reflection? From a mirror center? Uh-huh. <laughs> Which one is the real one? I would say this boss, because he's the one I was talking to. Uh-huh. All right, that's fine. You'll be able to close your eyes and go into much deeper sleep. Now forget all about it. Sleeping deeper and deeper and deeper. Deeper and deeper and deeper. Tell me, Lila, how old are you? Six. Do you go to school yet? Yeah. What kind of a school do you go to? Big school. Big school? Uh-huh. Well, what do you study? <laughs> it's what kind of thing? I play uh, in the sandbox, the dog, the car. Uh-huh. Okay, let's sit down again, Lyle. <laughs> That's right. And you'll be able to close your eyes and fall into much deeper sleep <laughs> and forget all about it so that soon you're going to be your own age again. <laughs> Soon you're going to be your own age again. That's right. And you're again growing older. And that's fine. And you're again growing older. Now you're again a college student, aren't you? That's right. And you go to college, don't you? Uh -huh. Now listen very carefully, Lila. Soon you'll wake up. You'll feel wonderful, refreshed, and relaxed. But one thing is very important. You're going to want to smoke very badly after you're wide awake. Do you understand? That's right, but you want to smoke badly, but the cigarettes will taste bad for you. They'll taste awfully funny, so bad that after the third cigarette, you'll have, after the third puff on every cigarette, you'll want to throw it away. In fact, you will throw it away, but you'll keep wanting to smoke. You'll keep looking for a good one, won't you? That's right. Now, soon you'll wake up, you'll feel wonderful, refreshed, and relaxed, and wide awake. But you'll want to smoke, but you'll be unable to because the cigarette will taste bad, but you'll keep trying. As I say, three, you'll be wide awake instantly. One, you're beginning to wake up. Two, you're waking up. Three, wide awake. How do you feel? Okay. Good. Sure, you can smoke. It's all right. Tell me, are you wide awake? Mm. Good. Feel good? Yeah, feel fine. Good. It's a pleasant experience, isn't it? Yeah, I feel rested. All right, you're sleeping deeper and deeper. <laughs> you still hear only my voice. Can you hear anything else? No. That's right. Now, listen very carefully. You like peaches, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Now, I'm going to give you a wonderful, juicy peach. Would you like a juicy peach? I think. Why shouldn't you eat it? I'm on a diet. You're on a diet? But that's all right. One won't hurt you, will it? No. Fresh? Fresh. Oh, it's good. Okay. Would you like it? Open your eyes. Look at the peach. It's a wonderful, juicy, pink peach. Mm -hmm. Look at it. Doesn't it look good? Would you like it? Yes. Would you like half of it? That'd be fine, thank you. All right. I'll cut it in half for you. Careful, because it's very juicy. Don't get on yourself. Okay. Tell me, how does it taste? 
Mm, delicious, very good. <laughs> nice and sweet, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. All right, you're sleeping deeper, deeper. Tell me about the film. What's the film like? It's about bears. What kind of bears? Teddy bears. Oh, teddy bears. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. All right, it's going away and you're forgetting all about it now as you're sleeping deeper and deeper and deeper. Deeper and deeper. Pardon me? Oh, sure. Yes. Sleeping deeper. Oh, sure. Could you, uh, somebody toss me those cigarettes? That's right. You're sleeping deeper, forgetting all about the bear. Sleeping deeper and deeper and deeper. Now listen very carefully. As you wake up, you'll feel fine, refreshed, and relaxed. You'll feel fine, refreshed, and relaxed. You'll feel wonderful, refreshed, and relaxed. But one thing is very important. Something very peculiar is going to happen. Each time you say the word I, or the letter I, you're going to be, have to stand up. Do you understand? You won't know why. You won't know anything about it. But you'll still have to stand up. Do you understand? Yes. That's right. Now, as you wake up, you'll feel wonderful, refreshed, and relaxed. You'll feel wonderful, refreshed, and relaxed, and wide awake. What will happen each time you say the word or the letter I, like in the alphabet, or any way? I'll stand up. That's right, but you won't know why. So I say three, you'll be wide awake and One, two, three. Wide awake. How do you feel? Fine, fine. Who feels fine? fine. Oh, I do. Oh, good. That's fine. Tell me, how's that taste? Oh, good. Good. Does it taste nice and sweet? Excellent. Very good. Thank Would you like a little bit more? No, I think this is enough. Okay, that's fine. Tell me, now, as I say three, you're going to much deeper sleep again. But look at me for a moment, and just imagine that this room was suddenly to grow cold. Just imagine the room gradually growing colder and colder and colder. Just think about it. As you think about it, you feel the room grow colder and colder and colder. Cold and colder and colder. That's right. Now, as I talk to somebody else, you're going to feel still colder. Don't look quite awake. That's right. Tell me, what would you, what, what's the trouble? I'm very cold. What would you say the temperature is? Oh, about 35. Gosh, that's cold. Well, try and not think about it and it'll go away. As you close your eyes, you'll sleep deeper and deeper. Close your eyes, you're sleeping deeper and deeper. Forgetting all about it, forgetting all about it. That's right. Feeling much better again. Now listen very carefully. Soon you'll wake up, you'll feel fine, refreshed, and relaxed. You'll feel wonderful. But one thing is very important. You're not going to remember anything of what has happened. In fact, the only thing which you will remember, the only thing which you will remember is that you took off your necklace. That is the only thing you did during the trance. That is the only thing that you did during the trance. Everything else is gone. You'll feel wonderful as you wake up. So I say three, you'll be wide awake. One, two, three. Wide right awake. How do you feel? Fine. Good. Tell me, what did you do during the trance? What's the last thing you remember? Removing my necklace. Uh -huh. Anything else? You snapping your fingers. Mm -hmm. What else did you do? How about the peach? I didn't need any peach. You didn't need any peach? No. Uh -huh. What did you do? I fooled around with my necklace. Uh huh. Good enough. Okay, just relax, make yourself comfortable. Say, by the way, uh, can you say the alphabet for me? Sure. sure. Would you? Sure. A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z. That's fine, but I think you missed the letter in there. Did I? Have a seat. Yeah. Uh, uh, count the letters out. Fingers again? Yeah. <laughs> Um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. All right, you got to make it. <laughs> Very good. Fine. Hey, what's the trouble? Uh, what, what's the matter with those? I don't know. There's something wrong. With those. I think those are better. Pardon me? I think those are better. Yeah. Oh, those. Well, that's all right. You'll, you'll be able to get it in just a minute. I'll tell you what. Why don't we just put the cigarette down if you don't like it?
put it down for a moment and just relax yourself completely. Just relax yourself. Close your eyes and you'll go deeply asleep again. Deeply asleep. Deeply asleep. Deeply asleep. Forgetting all about it. Forgetting all about it. Forgetting all about it. Sleeping deeper and deeper and deeper. Now as I talk to you, you find yourself forgetting everything. But one thing is very important. When you wake up, you'll feel wonderful, refreshed and relaxed. Wonderful, refreshing, relax, you'll enjoy sleeping very much. You'll have no pains, no headaches of any kind. You won't remember anything, but you'll feel wonderful. But one thing is terribly important. If any friend of yours, or any quack, or any stage hypnotist attempts to put you to sleep, you will not fall asleep, of course. Only if it is a qualified psychologist or licensed physician can you enter a trance. Only if you really want to, of course. At any other time, you just begin to laugh. Now soon you'll wake up, you'll feel wonderful, refreshed and relaxed, and you'll have enjoyed sleeping very much. As I say to me now, you'll be wide awake instantly. One, two, three, wide awake. How do you feel? Good, wonderful. Well, feel good? Fine. This is wonderful, Dr. Owen. We're terribly grateful to you. Uh, there's just two questions I had in mind that yeah. I think the television audience would like to know something about. These drawings. Oh, yes. Is, is, is that really the way she would have done it six years? Well, no, Professor. Uh, actually, this isn't, uh, isn't really quite that way. It's the way she thinks she would have done it. Now, as you see, she did a wonderful job of trying to do this, but actually a child would not draw it smoothly. Uh, he, she wouldn't really have gotten the idea of the face for the tree as well. But it, it really uh, is her idea of what a six-year-old might do. Yeah. Then there's one other question that comes up. We haven't much time, but what about the post-hypnotic suggestion? Could you suggest a crime in that and get it happen? Well, th this is a question which people ask quite often, uh, as, as you know. Uh, but of course, the best way to view this is to, as we said before, to recognize that the hypnotic phenomena is actually an interpersonal relationship. And in this interpersonal relationship, the subject trusts me. So, if I were to ask the subject, like, say, tonight, to shoot somebody, they would have, because they'd know that, after all, I'd give them a blank gun, or there'd be some trick to it. Certainly, I wouldn't ask them to shoot anybody on television and mean it. But if the subject had any reason to believe that this actually were a real crime that I was suggesting, they would wake up and they'd probably have one terrible headache. And for this reason, this, of course, would be very dangerous to do, and this is, again, one of the reasons why one has to be careful with the trance. Well, that's very wise advice. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, thank you very it's much been a wonderful Dr. evening. We're very grateful to you. Well, that's hypnosis, then. Next time, next time, we'll say just a little bit more about what I think happened and try to bring the thing down and talk about some similar things. Good. Goodbye. Psychology One with Edwin G. Boring, Professor of Psychology and Lowell Television Lecturer, Harvard University. Psychology One is produced by the Lowell Institute Cooperative Broadcasting Council in the studios of WGBH-TV, Boston. This is National Educational Television.